Welcome to Prepare. Sar Experience. On the 25th and 26th of April 1986, an inadvertent explosion at reactor number 4 at the Chernobyl power plant in the Soviet Union led to the most infamous nuclear accident of all time. The economic, environmental and political fallout of the accident hastened the demise of the Soviet Union. In the immediate aftermath of the accident, liquidators worked around the clock in very hazardous conditions in order to try and remove the radioactive material and debris and to put out the fire at reactor number four. Many of these men, if not all of them, were exposed to radiation levels that were way in excess of what were safe levels of radiation and many of them died in the years that followed the accident. The 50,000 inhabitants of the town neighboring the uh, nuclear power plant Pripyat were evacuated. They believed that they were just leaving for a very short period of time, like a couple of days. In fact, they never returned. So this crazy thing behind me is known as Duga and it's a, basically a Soviet uh, radar system so that it could track interballistic missiles if they were fired from the US. This is remember in the middle of the Cold War that this all this, this was built here and it's incredible. It's like almost one kilometer, kilometer long, 800 meters, going up tall it's 150. So you've probably seen a radar that goes like from side to side and beeps all the time. This is designed so you didn't actually need to turn it from side to side. That's why it's just so long. It's like one solid uh, way to track what's happening. So it's pretty crazy. This is a really historical place. And the reason why it was actually built here near to Chernobyl uh, was actually to get the electricity to power it apparently. And it's also quite a secluded area. This was a secret area in the during Soviet times. And actually only the workers and the soldiers who were based there knew what was going on, knew what this is for. Everyone else kind of probably just if they could see it even, they could see it in the distance somewhere and just thought, okay, it's a weird thing I shouldn't ask any questions about. But definitely it's a very cool spot to check out when you're on the tour to Chernobyl. It's not just about the power plant and Pripyat. Also got this super cool historical relic of the Cold War. One interesting side effect of the exclusion zone around Chernobyl is the fact that there's very little human activity and that actually has allowed nature to come back and reclaim the area and wildlife actually flourishes in the exclusion zone of Chernobyl today. There's a lot of myths online that you're going to see mutants with, you know, animals with three heads and 25 legs that they're not supposed to have, all that kind of stuff. I didn't see any mutants there. In fact, there doesn't seem to be any mutants at all when I looked online. Well, in the 1990s, just after Ukraine's independence, they reintroduced some wild horses to the Chernobyl exclusion zone, and they have actually really bred very well. There's actually a huge number of them now, and they are called Prezovalski, Prezovalski horses, Prezovalski horses. So they reintroduced these Prezovalski horses to the exclusion room. They actually took them from the south of Ukraine in the Kherson region, and they've actually done really well in terms of breeding, in spite of the fact that they're in a radioactive exclusion zone. So that just shows you that it's actually humans that uh, disrupt um, wildlife and nature more than the radiation that came from the accident. Будиваска. <laughs> Будиваска. <laughs> Let's see here.
We've arrived at a destination, the infamous reactor number four that exploded in 1986, right behind me there. This is a memorial to the people who died. As a result, we're not sure exactly how many people died due to the Chernobyl disaster. Of course, you had the firefighters who came, who were the first responders, also those who flew the helicopters that dumped all the sand and other materials onto reactor four in an attempt uh, to limit the radiation and put out the fire. Um, but it's very hard to estimate exactly how many people died directly there. The Soviet Union was a secretive um, dictatorship at the time and they didn't, weren't into giving us full disclosure information so it's very hard to calculate exactly how many people lost their lives as a result of the disaster. Now it's actually covered by a sarcophagus so they put this containment structure over it that hopefully will allow them then to completely dismantle and get rid of uh, anything that's dangerous inside of it but it's going to take them a few years to achieve that uh, actually i was here maybe about seven or eight years ago and this structure was actually in process of being built they had an old sarcophagus that the soviets built the year following uh chernobyl uh but who knows how good that was but eventually anyways they replaced it after 25 years hopefully this one lasts a bit longer and we get it all taken care of So today entry to the Chernobyl region is limited to a 30 kilometer exclusion zone uh, for which you need to actually have permission to enter. Of course you can take a tour in order to get that permission to enter the area. So I want to give a big shout out to Sergei of Adventure Tours in Ukraine for uh, organizing this trip to Chernobyl for me. He has a lot of badass tours for uh, the Kyiv region and other parts of Ukraine, including like tank driving, shooting, all that great stuff. And in fact, we went out and we recently filmed uh, me driving an armored personnel carrier and he like, drove it over an old, an old Soviet car. It was pretty badass. If you're planning to come to uh, Ukraine, you want to do this kind of more crazy alternative tour stuff, then definitely that is a great option. Also, he has a YouTube channel with a lot of that amazing footage that we've been filming over the last while. So definitely go and check those out in the description. For me, it's really like a time capsule for the end of the Soviet Union. Uh, because you actually get to see more or less what it would have been like. Now that's great if you want to, like one of some of my favorite places, for example, are going to see what the school was like and actually getting to see what the school books that the children would have read and would have been taught with. Um, also what was, you know, the posters they had, the propaganda, what it looked like, because whilst you can find these vestiges, of course, still in uh, many cities in the former Soviet Union to actually see what it was like in 1986. Also, you have the iconic Ferris wheel, which actually never turned. Uh, because it was due to be open actually for the May Day celebrations just after the accident. Of course, the area had been already evacuated at that stage, so it never actually operated. It's starting to deteriorate quite rapidly, so I would definitely encourage you to go as soon as you can uh, to see it before it just becomes basically a museum and everything is left out uh, just for you to photograph, uh, which is a pity. And I think there is a little bit of that already at uh, the site just because so much of the stuff was taken, unfortunately. And also the, the elements, the weather elements have just like basically deteriorated everything uh, that's around it as it's just decaying, right? So you need to go as soon as you can, go check out Chernobyl and Pripyat. My cell phone. experience.